بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome everybody and thanking you for your cooperation and participation in our program Alhamdulillah I can see five sites I can see Durham University uh, Lebanon uh, Islamabad Imam Sadiq University in Tehran and also Kuwait University and we hope that uh, Mahi will join us shortly. Today's lecture, which is number six actually, will be given by Brother Muhammad Tariq from IDB on treasury management in Islamic in an Islamic financial institution. Uh, Brother Muhammad Tariq joined the Islamic Development Bank IDB as a treasurer in November 2002. His responsibilities at the bank are wide-ranging, encompassing treasury, resource mobilization, investment management, banking relationships, etc. Brother Muhammad Tariq represents the IDB on the boards of some of the financial institutions in which IDB is a shareholder. More recently, he has been closely associated with the development of the Sukuk market and hedging of financial risks under Sharia. Before joining IDB, he had worked in financial institutions in financial institutions in Bahrain for six years, but most of his working experience has been in the investment banking field in leading institutions in the UK from 1972 to 1996, where he held senior roles involving capital markets, corporate finance, and asset management. <laughs> Brother Muhammad Tariq has been a member of the Institute of Actuaries, London, the, Lo the London Stock Exchange and Securities Institute in London. He studied mathematics at the University of London and as a researcher fellow, he has written several research papers in algebra. Uh, Brother Muhammad Tariq, inshallah, will give his lecture, as we said, on treasury management in Islamic financial institutions. Please, Brother Muhammad Tariq. Thank you very much. Um, after that introduction and my role in uh, IDB has been as treasurer, uh, let me go into what this role in, of treasury in Islamic financial institution entails. Uh, as you can see, I have divided uh, today's subject on three different subheadings. First one is the management of the liquidity. That's a crucial role of, uh, in the treasury area in Islamic institution. Then, of course, resource mobilization. And then, finally, I will touch upon the area of hedging of financial risks where treasury plays a role. Uh, as, you, as normal, uh, these roles are not exclusive. Management of the liquidity has a great deal of connection with resource mobilization as well. And now, on the first uh, topic, management of the liquidity, first of all, we need to see and understand uh, what is liquidity. And uh, naturally, what we need is that we need to have funds available as and when required. So the instrument in which the money has to be invested, awaiting disbursement requirement, uh, has to be such that they can be liquefied, we can turn that money into cash at short notice. Uh, later on, I will have a slide on asset liability management, and that will uh, define that uh, in some way, not all assets need to be kept, which can turn into cash at short notice. Because uh, at a given time, the requirement uh, for cash will not be such that you need to liquefy. However, there, there should be a period in which that is possible to be done. So some of the assets uh, could be turned into liquidity uh, over a period of one day, some two days, some three days, and probably six, uh, six or seven days. After that, there are really long-term investments which have their role, but in a separate area. 
<coughs> of the bank concern. Naturally, uh, you can sell something at, at a price, but the price impact should not be such that you lose, lose a lot. You invested 100 in the hope that at the time this, these funds will be required and if you were to sell and get substantially below 100, which you invested, say 90, 95, 98, that will not be classified as a proper liquidity management tool. Uh, and it's irrespective of the fact that that instrument, instead of uh, giving you lesser value, it may give you higher. But the risk, risk is not uh, acceptable in, in terms of the treasury management. This will be a totally uh, investment portfolio which may contain, say, equities. There are some equities and most equities, listed equities, are tradable. They are, uh, 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 they are liquid in a sense, but they do not meet this test that when you invest it, you should get back what you invested plus some return. So that's a key distinction between treasury instrument and other instruments. Uh, <clears throat> so I think that's what I'm saying there, that they should have a minimal negative impact on sale of such securities, hence minimum price risk. Now, ability to deal in reasonable size or quantity, that's another issue. Uh, you may have some instrument which can be traded or where you can liquefy, but the size available at which you can actually dispose of the security may be too small. Now, small and large is in the context of the institution concerned. If, if an institution's overall size is, say, 100 million, that instrument is only 2 million. But larger institutions which have much larger balance sheet, much larger liquidity, the size in which they will invest will be much larger too. So if you have a, uh, which we will come in a minute, a sukuk, a tradable paper, but the actual size of that is small, then naturally you cannot trade in reasonable size. So it's the job of the, in the treasury that the instrument which is held, uh, individual instruments which are held, are such a size that they can be redeemed as well. Now again, I want to emphasize, uh, it's not the job that everything you hold can be liquefied uh, at, uh, at little notice. So, but you have to create a portfolio where some portion can be sold and the others you may want to retain for longer period. Now let's go into instruments for management of liquidity. What we have just talked about is the overall scenario, overall dimension, overall needs of the instruments as such. Now instruments for management of liquidity, we have conventional finance. Uh, uh, which, which means uh, generally non-Sharia compliant. Now there you have, you have many things. First of all, you have the interbank market. An interbank market is primarily a market in which one bank gives money to another bank for a period of time and with a specific rate of interest to be there. It can be for any period from one day to longer. Uh, and these placements or periods could be up to one year, but primarily when we talk about in the in the marketplace, the it's it's not very common to have these placements or interbank placements for longer than three months, probably exceptionally six months, uh, for the simple reason that uh, by and large, uh, the, in treasury you need to have the money available at short notice, as such. So by tying up money for longer term, uh, you have immediately a price risk, which means that if you have placed money for six months or a year at a particular rate, the rates change in the market. And hence you are taking the risk as such. Uh, now this is for conventional finance. Over and above, in, in, in the conventional finance, apart from uh, the very popular interbank market, you also have instruments uh, one typical example is what is called treasury bills. These are normally three months, but they can be other periods as well, uh, instruments issued by the central bank. 
they are used for different reasons one reason is management of the liquidity in the in the marketplace uh, at a given point in time this is one way in which the central bank intervenes in the market to increase the rate or decrease the rate uh, and that instrument generally is uh, is very liquid this is also an instrument in the conventional marketplace for the central banks to uh, uh, use as as you know that uh, most banks are required to put some liquidity with the central banks uh, so this is eligible security for depositing on behalf of the bank as uh, as uh, as the deposit uh, that is primarily for the reason that uh, most banks have to keep some liquidity to meet the needs if sudden suddenly there's a run on the not run on the bank so this this is directly held with a central bank who is the issuer so if you have uh, 20 million of treasury bills lodged with the issuer itself which is the central bank the central bank will make sure that they will pay against this security and that that then can be made available to pay the depositors or anybody else Uh, this is of the supposed to be in any country of the highest quality this is also short term so in a normal way it will mature and central bank is always issuing these treasury bills there are other other types of securities in more developed markets what we we'll call bank bills and other securities as well uh, uh, fras which are agreements uh, uh, between parties in which uh, money is placed for a certain period Uh, some are more liquid than others now of course uh, in islamic finance what is the what are the components which are available for islamic finance i have described for conventional finance one of them is uh, placement of funds under commodity murabaha so basically it is an interbank market instrument again but the the methodology is different i will briefly go into the mechanics of commodity murabaha although it is well very well understood so here we are saying that in the interbank market a bank in the conventional market uh, a bank a checks a rate for say one month what is the rate available as interest uh, with with bank a b c or whatever they will be different there is also um, screens provide uh, a rate for various variety of periods these are kind of median rates or or mid market rates which gives some indication that in the marketplace what is the price of money i'm talking about conventional market price of money for one month price of money for two months shorter periods so that sets some kind of benchmark that the rates in the market are around that level uh, normally in developed markets an independent party an association of bankers uh, collects these rates and puts it on the screen and in the uk the most famous and common one is called libor london interbank offered rate uh, so that is a collection of rates at a certain point in the day in the uk market is 11 o'clock uh, 18 banks are contacted and uh, the the three top ones and three bottom ones are ignored the rest you take an average and that sets a, a, a scale for different maturities what the rates are so at least i'm saying that this is what happens in the in the islamic market as well that you need to have a framework you need to see what are the rates available in the conventional market because never mind islamic finance but you know the investors have a choice to go to the conventional market or to in islamic market those who are islamic banks have no choice but the others have as well a choice that's why the benchmarks are still is the same so in terms of the islamic finance one of the things which will done will be that a bank a wants to place money with with the counterparty uh naturally in terms of the treasury you will have the risk assessed beforehand how much risk you can take for banks various banks some are naturally more risky than others and in the current market climate as you know 
the financial institutions which are primarily in uh, uh, managing money investment banks i should call in a way uh, they have uh, exposure greater exposure to financial markets uh, whether they are in real estate equities and other types of instruments they will be less liquid so most institutions have line which is called lines that means you can take a risk of the other counterparty to the extent of a certain amount S some are some are more sophisticated they put this condition with some time period so bank a risk at idv i can take up to 50 million for one month i don't want to tie up my money 50 million with this bank for longer than that period but i may accept 30 million for three months L the longer the period the greater the risk anything could happen on a longer term profile whereas for shorter term period there may be uh, maybe less risk so uh, it is common practice that uh, that limits or so called lines are set up between counterparties that i will have risk of these banks in these amounts uh, again this is anyway not not a matter of islamic finance but uh, generally speaking these limits are not Uh, the actual amounts are not disclosed between counterparties you can discover by over a trial and error over a period of time so this process is common because this is actually a risk assessment and islamic finance is not outside uh, that range in fact this is the strength that is not is the is the riba which is not accepted as such but otherwise a proper risk assessment should be central to islamic finance as such as well now having established that you have this limit you have the job you have got 50 million to place or to put for certain period one week or one month uh, then you will have a choice between various counterparties uh, uh, to deal who were may give you the highest and who should be within the limits if i have already if i have limit of 50 million with bank a and already placed 40 million now the available exposure then is of course only 10 million left so uh, a dealer would be mindful of this that his free exposure so most treasuries will have a list of what the overall exposure is and then what is free exposure for the day and so they have those limits based on it i'm giving you hopefully more practical insight than a theoretical way in which the markets function i'm just describing how it works in a dealing room and back office of a of a treasury in an islamic institution and some of these things are common between islamic uh, institutions and conventional now establishing this where we can place what we can have the best rate uh, the mechanism how the placement is done is what is uh, commonly called commodity murabaha transaction so the way it works is that uh, i think most of most of the people would be familiar but uh, for very briefly i describe how how it actually works uh, i need to place certain money i will ask that a certain party to buy a commodity which should be sharia acceptable mainly uh, copper aluminium one of these uh, uh, these commodities Uh, i will ask a counterparty to buy this commodity for me for cash settlement uh, it is possible that the counterparty i have chosen i can assign this task as in he can be my agent in the marketplace to acquire this commodity this commodity will be acquired and mostly there will be commodity brokers commodity dealers so this other bank will employ so to say one of the broker brokerage houses uh, larger institutions and larger amount of con uh, dealings take place out of london metal exchange so there will be brokers in london who will who will purchase this commodity uh, for the party for us if i am the party who is placing money so uh, but i will appoint the bank with whom i make the placement to be my agent to purchase this commodity 
having purchased this commodity for me so i am now the owner of this commodity i will ask i will sell this commodity 